Welcome back to A320 Knowledge, your trusted source for Airbus expertise. Today, we're diving into a vital flight control component, the ailerons. An aileron is a hinged control surface located on the trailing edge of each wing. By deflecting one aileron upwards and the other downwards simultaneously, an imbalance in lift is created. The lowered aileron increases lift on its respective wing, causing the aircraft to bank in that direction. Conversely, the raised aileron reduces lift on its wing. This coordinated movement allows for controlled rolling maneuvers. The A320's ailerons employ a conventional hinge design. They are attached to the rear section of the wing and controlled by a multiple hydraulic system. When the pilot moves the side stick to the left, for instance, a signal is transmitted through the flight control computers. This signal instructs the left aileron to deflect upwards while the right aileron deflects downwards. This coordinated deflection generates the desired roll response. The maximum deflection of each aileron is 25 degrees. A320 ailerons are incredibly strong, typically constructed from lightweight composite materials like carbon fiber reinforced polymer, CFRP. This allows them to withstand the immense aerodynamic forces exerted during flight. The ailerons are connected to two hydraulic systems, the blue and the green system. In normal operation, the left aileron is ran on the blue system and the right aileron is ran on the green system. The ailerons are controlled by the two elevator aileron computers, known as ELACs, which serve as the primary flight control computers. Normally, ELAC-1 controls the ailerons. If ELAC-1 fails, then ELAC-2 takes over all duties, but the hydraulic systems switch over. In this case, the left aileron is now ran on the green system, and the right aileron is now ran on the blue system. Two electrically controlled servo jacks actuate each aileron, with one of them operating at any one time. These servo jacks have two modes, active and damping mode. Active mode means that the jack position is controlled electrically, whilst damping mode means that the jack follows the surface's movement. When ELAC-1 is in control, the actuators operate in active mode. The remaining actuators remain in damping mode, ready to take over in case of failure. The aircraft automatically selects the damping mode if both ELACs fail or both the green and blue hydraulic systems have low pressure. In the case of a dual ELAC failure, the ailerons are lost. Now let's delve into a unique feature, aileron droop. Unlike some other airliners, the A320's ailerons exhibit automatic downward deflection when the flaps are extended for takeoff. This maneuver, known as aileron droop, serves a specific purpose. By deflecting downwards, the ailerons increase lift at the wingtips, enhancing low speed control. While the deflection itself might be subtle, its contribution to performance is significant. The droop for the A320 is 5 degrees, whilst for the A321, the droop is 10 degrees. The A320 also has this characteristic in reverse, called aileron anti-droop. This feature is present on some newer A320 models. It is active in the landing phase, more specifically when the aircraft touches down. When the ground spoilers are deployed to decelerate, the ailerons might momentarily deflect upwards. Aileron anti-droop helps to further augment drag, thereby improving the effectiveness of the braking system. The conditions for its activation are, one, ground spoilers fully extended on the ground, two, flying manually, no auto land, 3. Aircraft in normal law. 4. Pitch attitude less than 2.5 degrees. 5. Not in clean configuration. A flight control aileron servo fault. ECAM is triggered when there is a loss of one servo jack on one aileron or the loss of one or both ELAC-1 rudder pedal transducers. This has no significant consequence for the aircraft and is for crew awareness. An individual aileron is lost when the ECAM flight control left or right aileron fault appears. 
This alert triggers when there is a loss of both servo jacks on one aileron. In this case, fuel consumption will be increased due to the affected nominal aerodynamic characteristics of the aircraft. The FMGC fuel predictions will now also become unreliable, and the fuel penalty factors tables found in the QRH will need to be referenced. If one or both ailerons are indicated as fully extended, either upwards or downwards, then the fuel penalty factor is approximately 30%. To figure out if an aileron is fully extended, their position can be checked on the flight control system display page. If one or both ailerons are indicated as partially extended, then the fuel penalty factor is approximately 9%. Thanks for tuning in to this bite-sized tutorial on the ailerons. Thank you.